it was a night much like any other. I had just gotten home after a long day of, of caving and mining and crafting, and boy, was I tired. I was ready to hit the hay. I, I wanted to go to sleep, so I changed into my PJs, and then I went and said goodnight to our pufferfish in a barrel, Prickles. Good night, Prickles. And before I went to bed, though, I decided to write in my diary, like I usually do, a good way to wind down after a long day and just get out some of my thoughts about the world. But then it was it was bedtime. So we hopped into bed and it was then that I started dreaming the strangest of all strange dreams you could imagine. Don't mess with tall and short, OK? I'm the tall one. And there it was, everybody. In my dream, just for a fleeting moment, I caught a glimpse of something amazing, something truly magnificent, some sort of redstone contraption that called out to me. Unfortunately, though, I wasn't able to study the mysterious device in my dream because in the middle of the night, Prickles decided to jump into my bed and wake me up. Oh, Prickles! Prickles, no! Ah! Stop it! No! Prickles! Oh, you bad Prickles. You go back on the wall where you belong. I, I can't stay mad at you. I love you, Prickles. But please, let me sleep. Oh, it's daytime. No, the dream! The dream is forever lost in dream world. Oh, man. Okay, what are we going to do about this, everybody? I feel like we should make it our goal, our mission for today, to build that redstone device. Or... Or at least something similar. I don't think I can copy it exactly. To be honest with you, I don't even think that thing was finished. It looked uh, looked like a prototype, maybe. Whoever whoever designed it was probably lazy and didn't get all the bugs kinked out of it or something. I don't know. Um, yeah. Wait a second. Uh, Prickles, I'm going to go pick up some milk. I'll be back in an hour or so. Yes. Bye-bye. I'm never coming back. We're done with this place. Oh, you know how many times creepers have come out of this room and tried to blow me up in there? <laughs> nope, nope, nope. We gotta go find a new place, guys. If we're gonna build that device, we need spacious green grass areas. You know, we need we need a place to call our own. Not not cooped up in B-Dub's basement anymore. As much as I like this place, we'll probably come back to visit. Uh-huh, so we've been staying in the basement of B-Dub's tower here, and beyond that, if we go this way, to the right is the shopping district. Hopefully, I don't spoil anything here. Trying to avoid the thing on the left there. All right, uh, this is kind of the central hub now of like where people are gonna be hanging out probably in general. But beyond the shopping district, if we go a little bit further, it's only like 2,000 blocks away or so. We got uh, Joe's Pinball, Deep Field on the right there. I think he's sh shown that before, so that's fine. Uh-huh. A big giant thing. I don't know exactly how he's going to make that work. <laughs> uh, but then beyond that, we got this uh, Savannah slash uh, Plains area. And then beyond that is the jungle. This is the jungle I want to claim as my own. There's plenty of space here, plenty of green grass for us to... Settle down and uh, start up some farms and and uh, really start building here. So this is this is pretty awesome. I kind of settled down right over here. Uh, for now, that's this is kind of like my farming area, I think. But we might build the main base more around here. There's this cool little like central area, uh, a river that goes all around this little island here. So this is either going to be like where I put the portal to get to our place, or this is like where we'll actually start making our main building area. I'm not sure. I did set up a nether portal as well, but I haven't I haven't made the tunnel look nice. <laughs> I just did the, the bare basics here, but it's uh it's pretty easy to get back to town. Let's fly through here, then we got the main connection over here, which isn't uh fully built. I might have to uh work on that as well. Uh but then we go over here, we got the big tree in the middle, and then down over here to the left is the main uh area pretty much spawned through this portal here. Uh-huh, yeah, so we mostly got the location figured out now of where our base is gonna go, but also where this mysterious redstone device should be built. We want to build it in our base as well, right? 
Huh. You know, I wonder what it could be, guys. What what do you think it is? I could I could use some help on this one. It's got me stumped. So the very first thing I want to build in our base is a storage room because as many of you guys know in this game, inventory management is a nightmare. It takes up a ton of time and especially if you don't have a good storage system or if you just wait forever before you build your storage room and you got a ton of stuff that you then need to move into it. At the moment, this is everything we own right right beside us here. I moved everything out of the basement already. It's all over here uh, and in my ender chest here. Um, so moving should be easy at the moment. Let's get the storage room built first. But to do that, we need a few other things. We need materials, but we also need tools and armor, right? It's everybody's favorite time. It's the daily quest time. Buy something from any shop. Let's do it. Okay, put our head here. Let's go, let's go. What is in False's Beans? I do not know. Today we will discover what the False's Beans are. Oh, I think it's under construction. What is for sale over here? There's, there's no TNT shop on the server, is there? That's what we really need. Oh, this is the redstone shop. This actually really bothers me. He put the magma block on the right side and the soul sand on the left. You know, it's fine if you drive on the left side of the road, but uh, here, here where I live and where Scar lives, I don't understand why he did that. Is anybody selling enchanted books even? I don't know. I don't know. I can't find mending books. I'm getting a little worried now. This is just wood and stuff. Last but not least. Last but not least. Good name, I like it. Catchy name. Okay, so this is mostly just dies. Uh-oh. <laughs> I thought this was gonna be so easy, everybody. Just, oh, go shopping, get mending books, unbreaking books, you know, easy peasy. I can't find a bookstore anywhere. Uh, how much for the best block in the game? One diamond for three, that's, that's a good deal. I actually probably should buy all of these. I'm gonna buy all these. <laughs> Call me crazy. 11 diamonds. I know how hard those things are to collect. If you ever need to build with them, like that, that's a good deal. <laughs> I'll take it. What else we got here? I want to get uh, some honey. Just, uh, just a little bit of everything, right? Do we have raw honey? Yes, we do. That's one diamond for 32. Do, 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 do. Quest complete. Excellent. All right, we got our diamonds. Okay, so here's the situation, everybody. This is future Etho talking now. So the shopping spree didn't really go as planned. There wasn't really a whole lot of uh, stuff in stock. <laughs> uh, I also couldn't find the bookstore. Even though I found out later, Impulse does have a bookstore. I just wasn't able to find it at the time. So I ended up uh, mostly farming out the stuff myself. And this is how we did it. First, we headed into the nether to farm quartz. Quartz gives an absolute ton of XP that we could use to enchant our diamond armor and diamond tools. And at the same time, get quartz for crafting comparators and observers we'd need for the redstone device. And then we headed to a nether fortress to collect some blaze rods for brewing weakness potions. We'd need those for villagers later. Whoop. They say bow spamming doesn't work. Look at that. It works perfectly. Going to the nether allowed us to get protection four on a few pieces of gear so that we would survive raiding the end cities, which was our next stop. Oh my goodness, it's a new one. It's a new one. Yes. <gasps> Out of my way. Yeah, I got him. All right. You go away. Oh, you know what? I don't even have a looting sword for these guys. Although I think they always drop two on Hermitcraft, right? Uh, all right, free stuff. Oh, look at these upgrades. Upgrades happening. We only had the one elytra wing from Doc, so I wanted to get some backup gear, and the end cities are perfect for that. There's tons of diamond armor and tools in the chest, and at the same time, we could farm some shulkers for shulker boxes. We would need for our storage system here. Well, check it out. This is our loot from raiding two end cities. We got over two stacks of shulkers, some pretty good, uh gear here as well, especially the swords. We got two sharpness four swords. Now we didn't really get any mending gear in the end cities, so I figured we should head to a village and uh, start curing some villagers. Out of the five though, two of them ended up being nitwits, so that was a great uh, expenditure of resources. But the other three, I turned one of them into a mason because they are great for generating emeralds. The second one I turned into a librarian for uh, getting mending books. Got it on the second try, it was amazing. And then the third one was an armor smith, just for getting uh, some backup gear. And while we were there, I tamed a couple cats as well, in case we ever make a creeper farm. 
Oh, snappers, check this out, everybody. Bam, look at all this redstone. Oh, I think we're getting close. Probably need a bit more, to be honest, but I think we're, we're almost there. Uh, I just want to set up a quick and dirty uh, dye farm real quick here, flower farm, because uh, we're going to need a lot of glass and stuff, and we'll need to, well, we don't need to dye the glass, but it sure would look a lot better if we did. And yeah, I think one of my goals for Season 9 is going to be just to try to do things a little bit more efficiently, especially since I, I started a bit late this season. Uh, in Season 8, my I knew it was going to be a short season, right? So my strategy was don't build a bunch of infrastructure and farms and things. Like, I never made a villager farm, never did piglins or gold, or, or it took me forever to build a tree farm even. And... I thought that was a good idea at the time, and then later I found out like everything took five times longer than it should have to build, and I got really frustrated. <laughs> That's not gonna happen this season. Nope, nope, nope. I have learnt my lesson now. Uh, I'm gonna try to get things done quick and early here, and you know it's better to do a farm dirty like this than it is to like not build it at all. I think so. That's kind of the plan now. If I need something, I'm just gonna build it, and if it's something cool, I'll try to polish it. I think. Okay. But this farm doesn't need to be all that exciting. Let's get the job done. Oh, that's loud. Oh, let get away. Oh, man, I almost jumped out of my seat there. Okay, I got the sounds turned down, and we are making the flowers. Oh, out of bone meal. Okay, that's all we got. Cool. But that should be enough. We got blue, red, yellow, and light gray dye now. Noise, noise. Beep, burp, beep, burp. Warning, warning, etho alerts. Long, rambling, etho sentences approaching incoherent redstone coming your way. All right, everybody. Well, here we go. I'm excited. We're going to start building the mysterious redstone device, which, if you haven't figured it out yet, we are building a shulker box storage system. If you watched my season seven of Hermitcraft, you might remember we also built a shulker box storage system in that called the Googler. But the Googler works very differently from the one we're building today. It, that one worked by pulling items out of the shulker boxes, while the one we're building today is going to return full shulker boxes to us. And the backstory behind all of this is it's been over five years now since I first invented the shulker box search engine, which I used in the storage room called the Pixel in my Let's Play series. Basically, I built it as a prototype. I never really had a chance to use it and try it out. And then shortly after I built it, a couple updates came out that broke it. I needed to totally rebuild it from scratch, and I knew it would be a lot of work, but it's always been my dream to get that up and working again and be able to test it out for myself. So that's why we're building it on Hermitcraft today, because I want to actually try out this uh, storage system and see how good it is or how bad it is. <laughs> All right, everybody. Well, here we go. Let's check it out. So I got an absolute ton of stuff to show you and explain to you this episode, and I'm worried it's going to become overwhelming. So I'm going to try my best to break it up as much as possible and we're not going to get really deep into the redstone i'm just going to explain it in uh, layman's terms the best i can but what you see in front of us here is the shulker search engine this is not the full storage room this is just the device that finds the shulker boxes for you and i gotta say i'm very happy with how compact i got this it's there's probably room for a few improvements but i think this is pretty close to as good as it's gonna get to be honest with you i spent a lot of time on this <laughs> uh okay the best way to explain something is a demonstration i'd say so i've uh, divided this up we're gonna use bamboo as the, our first little search test here so i i put bamboo in all the yellow ones and then these purple ones i just put 32 clay balls in all of them as sort of a, a standard so we're trying to show like the yellow ones are the positive result and these are the negative ones because uh, we're trying to look for bamboo um, so let's head up here, and the way this works, we feed it a stream of shulker boxes. So the idea is you throw your shulker boxes into your storage room, and then you feed this this uh, shulker search engine the stream of the shulker boxes when you want to perform a search, and then it runs through the system here. Just trying to randomize these a bit, right? Um, before you do that, though, you have to set a filter, the item you actually want to try to find, and that goes into this variable item filter here. So basically we throw in an item into this hopper here, and then it flows into that and gets locked into place. So the bamboo is there now. And now it's gonna look for any bamboo in these shulker boxes once we let the stream flow in here. So let's watch the magic happen. <laughs> Aha. So then that funnels through the system. There's another breaker down here as well. And then when it finishes the search, it shoots the variable item 
out of the filter because we need to clear that for the next search that happens. And then here are the results. So these are all the bamboo chalker boxes. Yeah, these all have bamboo in, right? Look at that, look at that. And then all the negatives end up in the top one here. These are all our clay ball ones. Pretty cool, huh? Good stuff. Okay, Etho, go ahead and explain it to everybody now. How does it work? Boy, I wish I was an Etho right now. <laughs> all right, I'll try my best. Uh, as you can imagine, this is a very complicated device and the precision on it is extreme. If anything is just a slightly out of whack, the whole thing will, will probably stop working. And I've had to tweak it for, for many hours to get it all perfect. Um, but the general idea is the shulker boxes flow into the dispenser here, which then places them above a hopper. That hopper is our variable item filter, which attempts to pull an item out if it matches what we have here. And then this piston breaks the shulker box and pushes it over to the, the hopper on the left here. And it goes down to the next step. The items go down on the right one. Okay. And then if it detected or if it found an item that matched, then much like a right regular item filter, the signal gets extended to three blocks here and sends out a, a signal that yes, there was a, a match that happened. Okay. Then it goes down to the second spot here. So the shulker box goes into this dispenser. It gets placed again. And we remember, we might have taken an item out of that shulker box. So now we need to re-add it in. And th that item goes to this dropper, which then gets pushed into the, the shulker. And of course, like the hoppers need to be locked at precise times. Otherwise, it might pull out extra items. You don't want it to and all that stuff. <laughs> so... After it recombines the item, if it took one out of it, then the piston breaks it again and adds it. Uh, and then it goes into the shulker box, goes into these hoppers. And then you'll notice we have this locked right now. So depending on if the redstone block is here, if it's here, this is locked. So then the shulker will go into this one. If this is extended, then the hoppers will flow down to the bottom one. And that's how it splits them up. So this gets extended from that item filter here. If it found a match, then it lets it flow to the bottom. Does that make sense? Please say yes. Okay, I'm done. <laughs> I love this thing. Very fun to watch too. <laughs> oh, there goes the bamboo and everything looks fine. I've been testing this lots just to make, it, just to make sure there's no like odd cases where, you know, certain patterns mess it up, but it seems Perfect, so I'm very happy. But uh, yeah, now it's time to build our storage room and we're gonna take this core and uh, hook up an interface to it basically. And this is where the real creative freedom comes in. Like between projects, I probably wouldn't change this device too much. Like this is pretty close to as good as it's gonna get, right? But then what we do with it is really up to us. Like we could try hook multiple of these up together. Like in our dream, we had four of them hooked together for 10 shulker boxes a second it'll search. <laughs> Uh, but for the storage room we're building on Hermitcraft here, I'm just gonna try focus on getting one of them working and just see how that goes. Because there's also other devices I want to hook up to this that will make our storage room pretty cool. And it gets more complicated the more cores you have. So we're keeping it simple today. Fast forward a few hours and oh snappers, look at this everybody. We got the storage room all built. Absolutely went perfectly smoothly. <laughs> there was no trouble. Didn't forget a whole bunch of observers and redstone in places. No, no, no. Oh boy. Yeah, this was a tricky one, guys. Now, if you're going to copy this from the video, I'm going to warn you. That's what I tried to do. I, I took video of a creative world where I had this built and uh, it's very hard to see things. I'm going to try to go around and show you like all, a whole bunch of angles here. But if you're trying to copy it, I'm guessing you're going to have trouble because I sure did. Um, yeah. Okay, but... It is pretty much just the core with a few things attached to it. Um, and then we go down here. There's a whole bunch of stuff hidden over here, too. Uh, ooh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Lots of stuff. Lots of stuff to check out and see and, and explain. And uh, I'm really tired now, so I don't know if we're going to do all that today. <laughs> but much like before, we're going to do the clay ball and bamboo uh, sample test here. So this is like where the storage goes, like where our shulker box goes on the right side here, everything in this column. And we can pull stuff out here ourselves if we want to, but if we want to use the search function of the, the storage room, 
Uh, we look into the middle chest here. This is where I'm going to keep the item filters. I don't have those set up right now because, again, it's going to take a bit of time to do that. And I don't have a whole lot of stuff on the server just yet. But let's say we're looking for bamboo. So we got bamboo here. We hit Q to throw it into the item filter. There's a hopper right here that sucks it up. And that automatically starts the search. And then those, those shulker boxes flow out of here. And when it gets re results, it ends up over here. That note box is actually pretty annoying, isn't it? <laughs> Might need to change that. Uh, and then when we want to access the shulker boxes, we can stand on the pressure plate here. And, oh, look, we, we got bamboo in this one. And we can take the bamboo out and and use it and whatnot. If we need more, we can we can go down the search and, and grab as much as we want. And go through all the shulker boxes that returned a positive result. All right, I'm discovering all kinds of missing redstone now. <laughs> so we're not done. Wait a second. Let's go into the, the bowels of the device here all right so i guess there's supposed to be a hopper here and then like some some actual mechanism i got like a a thing for moving this redstone block back and forth and then it doesn't even do anything right now <laughs> it's supposed to lock a hopper here okay let's see if i can get this in place right now i got some shockers in there yeah. okay okay it might be okay now while we're down here too let's change this this tune because that's driving me nuts for some reason. I might just remove that totally. Oh, okay, what happened here? We still got uh, those inside, good. So that should end up here. Yep, okay, cool. So now that we've added that uh, mechanism, this clear command should work. And also when we do the next search here, let's say we try to find, let's look for spruce logs, okay? We don't have spruce logs as an item filter right now. So it should end up in here when I throw this in here. And it should only return that one box with the spruce logs in. And those uh, shulkers that were in here got cleared out. So now when we get the new ones in, or the new one because there was only one result, um, all those other ones aren't in the way, right? So that's pretty cool. And that should end up over here. The main timing issue for this, or the main thing that costs time, is the water elevators in the back here. I should maybe change these to dropper elevators. They might be a bit faster, but they take like, oh, probably three, four seconds for the item to go from the bottom to the top. And that factors into every single th search result, right? So it is a bit costly on the time. A uh, really cool feature we have with the storage room is the way we did the item filters here. So it's not just like a bunch of hoppers feeding into these chests. They're actually kind of in intelligently controlled. Let's say we do a, a search for steak. You see how there's three steak in here? Now there's two. We, I think we got one shulker box with the steak in. So that should get returned as a result. And... The other thing is, depending on where it is... It might find it sooner or fa sooner or later you know if it's at the end of the search it'll take later if it's at the first one you'll get it pretty quickly so uh yeah we got our steak here cool cool now that item filter we threw in automatically comes back into the chests into these middle chests and not only that it goes into the exact same spot you see how we got three here again so that means if we organize these like let's say we have the bottom one here for the different stone items in the game Maybe we have this one for the food items in the game, one for all the plants, one for all the wood. Um, when I throw like a wood item in, it's not going to randomly end up in one of these chests. It's going to go right back where, where it came from. So that's really neat. Uh, some other cool features, we got a stop search ability. Let's say we found the result already or um, we're just we just don't care about the search results anymore. This is counting down, counting down, bam, we hit stop search, and it stops the search. Did it find the cyan? Oh, it's coming. <laughs> yeah, so we actually got the result because uh, it, it went through it before I stopped it. Oh yeah, and by the way, I don't know how you guys are going to react to this episode. Like, I don't know if you'll find it super interesting or really boring. Uh, I'm biased because I think this is amazing, right? And I want to keep playing with it. <laughs> But you know, you guys might not feel the same. So let's let's just do one more um, 
search here to show off what this left button does, and then we'll we'll call the episode, I think. Just in case half of you have tuned out. Let's do a final search here for the clay balls, and we should get quite a few results. Because there's a lot of shulker boxes with them in. These left chests don't do anything. They're just for symmetry. We got an inner chest for convenience. And this bottom left one, you'll see shulker boxes flowing through here. Uh, this is an extra buffer in case we get a whole bunch of uh, shulker boxes that are positive. Like, let's say there was 50 of them. They need somewhere to go, right? So there's a, a, a buffer space here for them. And here are our results. We got the clay balls. We can grab those and, and then they'll go, the shulker box will go back in here. But let's say we want to do another search for sticks, right? These shulkers will not get calculated into the next search because they're over here, right? And it's actually kind of difficult to get them back into here. It takes like five seconds or so. And by the time I do that, it might be all the way through this, right? And, and it'll mess up the search if I add them in late. So as an extra option here, let's say I do want to factor these into the next search instead of just having them uh, get cleared out automatically. There is a manual override. We press this. And then they just, they should automatically flow out of here. Why are they not flowing out of there? Good question. Is it because it was full? Did that mess it up? Oh. I got one more thing to fix, guys. <laughs> Uh-oh. All right. Uh, yeah. So that's another thing. Anyways, hopefully you guys enjoyed the episode and found it interesting. Thank you for watching. Have a wonderful day. Take care. Bye-bye.